Fuck yeah! I think I got it. Give me a second. Ah. Yeah, I had it in a second. Ah, there we go. Ugh. Come on. Come on, you mother. Ah. Gotcha. Yes. There we go. Ah, finally. Hey guys, me again. Thanks everyone for the very awesome advice on how to get rid of that screw. I ended up brute forcing it, but otherwise I would have definitely listened to what you guys said. Also a very special thank you to everyone who came up with some very, very interesting advice and ideas on how to tackle this whole case building thing. There was one comment in particular that was really interesting and I pinned it to the top of the video on YouTube. Definitely have a read. Today we're going to talk some more about patch flow and cable management and stuff like that. I really think this topic is super important and if you mess this up then you're really gonna just end up with an instrument that's not really fun to play or which really hinders you in your creative process. So really paying proper attention to your entire patch flow is massively important. Well, cable management is probably one of the most boring topics to talk about when talking about modular synths. It's also one of the most important ones to get right. So right now I kind of have a problem. These are the last of my molds and I've barely even started. Something else that's worrying me is this section over here. This is going to be amazingly awesome to have um, buddied up with my bird kits for a couple of reasons. If I take each and every one of these outputs and take them into the CVs of these Quintet mixing consoles, for example, then I can have all my uh, voices and everything that's going on and I can put them in here, which is kind of awesome because then it can kind of serve two purposes. One would be in an effects scenario or stuff where I'm doing more kind of like dance or techno oriented stuff then I can put all my voices in these individual inputs and take an output, uh, put it into whatever FX is going on, like my delays or whatever, and control how much of a certain voice is going towards the effects over there. So this kind of becomes kind of like this aux send setup. The other thing I had in mind was to kind of turn this entire thing into a dynamics processor of sorts. Like if I have all my voices and they're all patched up, like imagine there is a synth voice going on over here. Like there's an oscillator, filter, VCA and all that stuff. And it's just a complete voice. The output would go in here. And then I have a second VCA, which determines the overall volume and phrasing and stuff like that of that particular voice so that it doesn't just spit out everything on whatever uh, volume or voltage that's going on with the voice itself, but I would actually have volume dynamics. And that's something that I've never done in my patches ever, is do like serial patching with VCA. So that would be fun over here, especially with more orchestral patching. This could really help out a ton on that front. Now, the biggest downside about this approach right here, or this execution of this approach right here, is that if you look at this, there is 20 jack sockets on one of these modules. Am I counting this right? Five, ten, thirty. Yep, I was right. So basically that's 20 jack sockets per module. There's four modules over here, which means there's 80 cables that would kind of be going in this direction. And I'm not saying that I'm always going to be fully populating this thing, but if I do, then there's going to be absolute chaos. The alternative actually is not that much better because if I place these modules, for example, out to the outer perimeter over there, like here, let me do that for a second. Okay, so now I have 20 jack seconds over here, which is, well, that's all right, I guess. The problem is that now I have 16 cables coming from here, going in this direction. Everything that's going on here is going to have cable clutter and stuff going on. Same thing kind of is going on over here with where I had planned out the rest of my molds, uh, the few that I have over here and the ones that I have over here. If I do it this way, then there's going to be these massive obnoxious kind of cable clutter things going on right in my control surface. There's another scenario right here um, with my circadian rhythms, for example. There's eight jack sockets and I was super happy about having this one right here. Uh, but then I started considering again like, okay, so if I make this entire thing kind of like a control surface thing, at some point I'm going to be placing my drum module somewhere. Um, they would probably be over here because I do need to touch them sometimes, or they are going to be over there. But that means that there's going to be cables running in this direction. And my end goal, the same that I was talking about with the Era 101 and all that stuff, what I really want is to have these surfaces as clean and tidy as possible, so that there's no cables to interfere with my hands and stuff like that when I'm moving around with things. So, based on the YouTube comment that we all just read, this one right here, I should have very clear goals about what I expect from the different districts of my system. 
So I'm taking that advice and I'm saying that these front two boats are going to be all about control. Which also kind of means that if I can figure out a way to get these molds over here and move them somewhere else, like over there, and these molds and put all these away and not bother with them at all, um, remove the cable clutter as well and remove everything that is not something that I'm going to be actively uh, controlling and manipulating with my hands and move them all away from at least the center of my case and move them towards the sides, for example, then this is going to be all like this very clean Valhalla of no cables and it's just going to be nice. So based on some suggestions from some viewers and stuff that I saw on some of the various fora out there and everything, I decided to do to look into bridge modules. So a bridge module basically is two modules that are connected with each other with a ribbon cable on the backside and you jack something on this side and then you take it on, on the other side and you continue patching. It's kind of like a wormhole or a bridge. That's why it's probably a bridge module. And this can really take care of cable clutter quite a lot. Now, I'll strictly be using these bridge modules for CVs because, well, yeah, if you look at an audio cable, usually they're pretty thick. There's a lot of copper in there and they are made for sound. If you look at a ribbon cable, it's super thin and it's it's probably going to be very noisy. They're not made for sound. So I'm going to, if I'm going to use these bridge modules, then I'm not going to be using them for sound. But even just for CV, I think they're going to be perfect. Right. So imagine this being a bridge module and me being able to take like one jack out, putting it on the other side in, and then have all my drum modules coming out over here, for example, or starting somewhere around here and uh, have the bridge coming out from here and all my cables are essentially um, erased from the whole core of my system. And I can do the exact same over here and over here, which basically means that these molds over here can go away. And I may even consider putting like two bridge modules over here to take care of everything on the ear 101. And then I also have the whole cable situation solved going on over here. Now, something I gotta keep in mind is that this is not one massive case, but this is eight individual boats. And well, yeah, with the four other ones that are still going to be connected to this, that's going to make 12 individual cases, which means that I cannot internally connect from this end of the system all the way over there. But what I can do is try and make bridge points as easy as I can. Like, for example, if I take one bridge with an Ethernet connection or something else, like a longer ribbon that goes to the backside of the whole thing, then I could portal all the way to the other side and do it that way. And I kind of think that, in a way, what's going to make this very nice is that usually I always patch towards the core because this is where all the controls are. But if I flip my whole way of thinking from patching away from the core, so cables are going away and not towards the system, then I can really try and make kind of like this outer perimeter of uh, utility stuff, like the intakes for this control system. And... Um, kind of put up like these walls or kind of this block where all the um, stuff that's going on in the rest of the system is all going, going to be filtered through these outer perimeters and they're going to be controlled from within here but nothing that's going on over there will have to find its way over here so I'm not going to need any very long cables going from this part of the system all the way to wherever else I'm going. Now, of course, in any real patching scenario, you're always going to be making connections the way you please anyway. And all of that is an intuitive process. So very well, it could be that I'm still going to be making a mess of my patches, but at least I'll have the option to reroute certain things if I really feel like I have to. And if I design it that way, then maybe at some point I'll have the discipline to stick to my own rule sets. And from that moment on, everything should be very, very, very good. My computer is tripping balls. Anyway, I sent a mail to the ADAC systems people and they were super helpful and friendly in saying that, unfortunately, they didn't have anything in stock right now, but they were making some overtime to try and get these modules to me as soon as they could. Andre even said that he may even be able to have them done by tomorrow, which is absolutely fantastic. Dude, you're a legend. And here are the skinny expanders. These ones are super nice because they're only 2 HP and I can place them in odd corners. I can expand the bridge up to 24 cables or 24 patch points, which is super awesome. And they have like the outer ribbon situation going on. 
So this makes me super happy. Free promotion for ADAC systems. Haha, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Right, so while I wait for more multiples to come this way and these bridge modules and all that stuff uh, to find its way over here to my studio, I will start thinking about the next couple of steps of this system because well, we are still working on the control surface itself. I want to be able to control all the things that I need while I'm playing with the whole thing. So next video is going to be all about designing the layout for your secondary layer. If you of see controls. anything in the video that I'm covering and you think like, hey, dude, you really should look at this because this is really going to do something nice for your process, um, definitely comment it in YouTube or Instagram or wherever this video ends up being posted. It really, really, really helps out a ton. Actually, there's one thing that maybe you guys have an idea on. Like, I'm looking for screws that don't break when I use them. And a lot of people are suggesting knurlies uh, to use those, but I'm kind of afraid that I'm gonna have like a ton of pins sticking out of my system. So maybe some experiences with those things are definitely gonna help me out. But actually I'm kind of thinking about in the direction of titanium screws, screws or something like that. I'm not even sure if that's a thing. If it is, I'm kind of considering it because that's going to help me out. I've been buying so many sets of screws that maybe just getting something serious for once is going to save a ton in the long run. But if you have any experiences with proper M3 or M2.5, M3, I think M3, whatever, screws. If you have ideas for screws, let me know because that's really going to help out. It's a super boring topic, but it's going to make me very happy. All right, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.